Welcome to module two of developing vocabulary a whole school approach. In this module, we're going to be having a look at some ways that you can find out more about the vocabulary use in your particular school or setting. So we looked in module one at why developing vocabulary is so important and why we need to be taking a whole school systematic approach to developing this area. In this module, we're going to share with you three different ways that you can find out what's going on in your particular school or setting and use that to identify your priorities and think about how you're going to build your approach. So what are the issues in your school? There are three different ways that we worked with schools to help them to find out more about what's happening in terms of vocabulary. I think it is really important that we actually do undertake some finding out activities rather than just rely on a general sense of what we think might be happening. Certainly schools found it very useful to be able to target their work, to know a little bit more about what was happening for particular year groups or cohorts or across key stages. So the three tools that we've used with schools and that I'm going to share with you briefly today are these. We're going to look at question level analysis from the Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 1 SATs. We're going to look at a diagnostic vocabulary analysis of writing. And we're going to share a really simple single word vocabulary assessment tool that you could use. We're not suggesting you should use all three of these, but certainly schools have used most of these in some, in some way during their development. So to start with, let's have a look at question level analysis from the SATs. Those of you in Key Stage 2 will be very, very familiar with this, I'm sure. Every year when we complete the SATs, um, we get an analysis that comes through on analysing school performance that enables us to compare the performance of our children against all children nationally in different aspects of the tests. What I've put up for you here comes from the 2019 tests. Obviously, we have no tests in 2020. Um, and this is the overall attainment nationally in relation to the different content domains within the reading paper at Key Stage 2. You can see that there is a specific content domain that focuses on giving and explaining the meaning of words in context vocabulary. Um, and there were six marks available for children to um, demonstrate their ability in this area in the 2019 test. And 78% of children nationally got those questions right. However, when we've worked with schools to look at this more closely, it's really important also to look at the other strands within reading, particularly to draw attention to the last strand, identify and explain how meaning is enhanced through the choice of words and phrases. That also is a really key assessment of children's vocabulary skills and there were three marks in this year's paper, last year's paper. However, we also found with schools that you need to look at any strand where your children perhaps performed worse than other children nationally or where you felt that they had done, there were real issues to address. Because when you look at other questions, frequently there are vocabulary elements to those questions that are really key. So even though you may not, even though you may not show up as having an issue in those vocabulary strands, it's worth looking at the other questions. I'm just going to share with you a couple of questions from the papers in 2019 to show you what I mean. So if we start with this one, this, paper, this comes from the Key Stage 2 paper. It was towards the end of the paper, so it was the more challenging text. Um, and this was a question that was about looking at how meaning is enhanced, is enhanced through the choice of words and phrases. 66% um, of children nationally got this correct. So what I'm going to do is just give you a moment to read through the text um, and then have a look at the question and see what answer you would give to this question. And then we'll analyse what the vocabulary demands are and why this was tricky. OK, I'm sure that you didn't have any trouble answering that and you identified the word strangled as the answer to that question. But let's just have a little reflect on the vocabulary demands of a question like this. Um, firstly, you have to pull together a lot of information from across this paragraph and across the whole text, in fact, to have some sense of what it's about. It's actually about a musical instrument, but you need to be able to draw on different bits of information to be clear about that. So that in itself is a challenge. 
But I think most importantly, many children would find the right bit of this text to answer. But there are some red herrings. So for example, if you look, she heard the soft strangled notes. Okay, so we notes of a song, right? Okay, that's that's linking to the music box. But if you didn't know what strangled meant, you could be misled by, by the adjective soft that precedes it. So you might be thinking, oh, well, strangled must mean the same, something pleasant like soft. So that's a problem for children. Secondly, I think you may have some sense of the meaning of the word strangled, but you may have quite a literal understanding of that word, in which case understanding its metaphorical, almost idiomatic use in this text is really challenging. So you can see, to be able to answer the question, children need to have quite broad and quite deep vocabulary understanding. Let's have a look at a key stage one example. This one comes from the 2019 paper, um, and this is specifically um, a question that's designed to draw, show children's ability to draw on their knowledge of vocabulary. So again, just have a moment or two to read it through and decide on the answer to the question. Whilst you're reading, have a little think about what are the vocabulary demands of this question. OK, I'm sure you didn't have a difficulty again. The answer was demanding. Um, just worth noting as well, as I'm sure many of you are aware, there are lots of questions like this where children have to find and copy one word or two words or three words. So they need to be able to be very precise in understanding how the vocabulary specifically relates to the meaning rather than a general sense. So here, um, what's hard about this? Well, I think there's a couple of things. Firstly, you may not have come across the word demanding meaning difficult. You might have heard demand as in a demand for something, um, which you could probably extrapolate to meaning difficult, but that's quite a big jump for key stage one children to make. So if you didn't know what it meant, how could you work it out? Well, the majority of this paragraph leads you to thinking that Liam really enjoys his job because he's out in the outside with the birds and the trees and the plants. But there's one really key word in here um, which helps you to understand uh, that it's demanding that you need to be looking for. And I think that word is but. If you look at the last sentence, it's a very demanding work job, but Liam enjoys it. And that's frequently the case when we're looking at, at understanding words that we, we don't know but are trying to clarify. In this case, we have to infer from that conjunction, but that actually it's putting those two clauses in opposition. So the, it's a very demanding job is going to be the opposite of enjoying it. And that's how we get to difficult if we don't already know what demanding means. So you can see some real demands for children in terms of vocabulary. So if we analyse how children have coped with those questions in our school or setting, we can get a really good understanding of which aspects of their vocabulary we might need to develop. We can look too at the grammar and uh, punctuation papers. Um, this is the Key Stage 2 SPAG test 2019 and you can see there is a vocabulary strand and again there were six marks in 2019. I'll just show you an example of some of the sorts of questions that relate directly to vocabulary. That's, of course, apart from being able to understand the vocabulary of the questions. So in this one, you can see that only 39% of children got this correct in 2019 nationally. So the children needed to complete the sentence by adding a suffix to the root word music. So every member of the Jones family was musical, but only Mr. Jones was a professional musician. So that's vocabulary in, in terms of children understanding the morphology of words, which typically we're more likely to be teaching through spelling. But what we need to be doing is helping children to connect what we do in spelling with their understanding in vocabulary and understanding how adding a suffix changes the meaning or the word class of a word and understanding the generic elements of that um, and I think making those links more explicit can really help children so again if you look at your papers and you find that children are struggling with those that might lead you into knowing that you need to do some more development work about connecting vocabulary and spelling here's another example from key stage one very similar issue prefixes in this case um, so which word can have the letters un in front of it so I think what this is about is showing that when we teach things like prefixes, we have to go beyond 
just teaching them what they mean. We need to make sure that we're giving children multiple exposures to lots of different words and, and examples and non-examples of words that can have that prefix attached to them. So analysing those papers is a really useful way of getting under the skin of how children by the end of the key stage are demonstrating their vocabulary skills, might head you off on some useful paths. A second way that we've worked on with schools to analyse your vocabulary picture at school is to look at a diagnostic analysis in writing. Um, we couldn't find one so we made one up and this is the analysis tool that we used. It's a very simple grid where we record um, what we find in, in a small sample of children's writing, it's up to you what that sample is, um, from short pieces so that we can begin to draw together a bigger picture. But before we do that, I need to talk to you about this idea of tiers of vocabulary because we refer to that in the analysis. Jean mentioned um, the tiers of vocabulary and the work of Becca McEwen um, in her initial opening video. Um, and I just want to say a little bit more about this here. It's really significant. So there are three tiers of words that have been identified. And it really helps us to think about what we might be focusing on. So tier one words initially, um, these are the words that are very simple, they're everyday, they are very typical of a dialogue and functional interaction through dialogue. Many children will learn those words just through enacting with the world. You know, they're often will learn them through labeling simple things. And most children will come to school with a reasonable vocabulary of tier one words. May need to be an issue for those children with speech and language difficulties or in the very early years. But fundamentally, they're not the words that we want to be teaching. And in many cases, they're the words that we want to be moving children on from in their writing. I'm going to jump up now to the tier three words. Now, this is where sometimes we find that teachers go to when they're trying to teach vocabulary because they're the hard words. Actually, they're not the most rich for vocabulary teaching. Tier three words are relatively low frequency, highly specialised words. The key thing about them is they only have one particular meaning in one particular context. And for that reason, they're often very subject specific and quite significantly difficult. You know, so you can see some examples there, pyroclastic. You're never going to use the word pyroclastic in any other context. It has one meaning, quite technical, quite specific. The words that we really need to be working on with children are those in between tier two words because these are what Becca McEwen described as really high mileage, high value words. They're more frequently occurring and they occur frequently within written text. So they're therefore the words, the vocabulary that is characteristic of academic learning and of reading. These are words that um, are less common in your day to day speech. They're words that occur in written text and they are high mileage because they can often appear in lots of different contexts. Um, you can see there they're described as having high utility for literate language users. These are the words that if children are lacking them or struggling to understand them will be a significant barrier to children's learning more widely. So these are the words we want to see appearing in children's writing. So just moving back now to our example, I'm just going to, we haven't got time to do it, it fully with you, but I'm just going to share a piece of writing and then how we analysed it to give you a flavour. So this is a piece of year two writing about tigers. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so I can read it. So where do tigers live? Uh, tigers live in the snowy mountains and the green trees. Also the grey rocks. Tigers live in the green jungles or the cold mountains. When a tiger meets another tiger in its territory, it's, I think it stares fiercely at it and it gets mad. What do tigers eat? The calm tiger eats juicy meat, but also eats green grass. Okay, you're probably getting a bit of a flavour of this child's writing already. Let's have a little look at what that might look like on our table. So I'm going to move us on to our analysis so you can see the headings and I'll explain as we go. So the first column is tier one vocabulary and we're recording this where it's overused so we're not going to put in every word that's tier one and you can see here that this particular child has got a lot of tier one particularly adjectives, simple adjectives that are overused and we've recorded them there. In the next column we look at tier two vocabulary these are the words characteristic of written text. These are the words that we want to see more of. And there's a bit of it occurring in this text, words like territory and fiercely, but not very much. 
Then we look at tier three vocabulary, the specialized technical vocabulary. We have the word Siberian tiger, but not a lot else. The last two columns were not relevant in analyzing this child's writing, but they can be really useful. So firstly, we look at little phrases or words that children put together um, that, um, that maybe um, show that they're able to use vocabulary creatively. And then finally, this idea of attempts to use vocabulary creatively and ambitiously that don't quite work, because that can really show you children who are trying things but not managing. So you can see for this child, if I were to draw together the, the overall picture, this child needs to be able to develop more sophisticated tier two ways of being more descriptive and more specific. This is a piece of information writing. So the adjectives that are used need to be more specific and descriptive. And we would definitely want to see more tier two vocabulary used. So that gives me a bit of a picture. If I were to complete this again, perhaps after um, developing some vocabulary initiatives in school, we could get a really good sense of how things have improved. If you were to do it over several children, you could build a picture of what's happening in your class or a year group or a cohort or a particular department. We also have a year 11 example in our CPD material product that you can use as well. So the other way you can capture what's happening in your school is through our single word assessment. We um, again developed this based on some other examples that we'd seen. So this is not based on a set um, bank of vocabulary. You determine which words you use to assess. So you would think about either words that you would expect children to know by this point or words that you hope that they're going to know or words that you're intending to teach. You'd list the words, you'd work it one to one with the child and you'd ask them, they know what it means, you write what they say, and you score it. It's up to you what you decide one, two, or zero means. And then you would ask the child to put it in a sentence and do the same, score it. Many teachers found this a really useful tool, partly for getting a sense of where children were, but also as a way of, of maybe doing a pre and post assessment to see whether the teaching and the um, initiatives they put in place were making a real difference. So we've shared with you three different ways of finding out. You would then need to move on and really think about how you build that into identifying your priorities and focuses because you can't do everything. Vocabulary is huge. You need a way of focusing it down. I'm just going to share one example really briefly with you. So this is an action plan from one of the schools that we worked with. And you can see that they've identified a clear objective, which is around um, increasing the percentage of children who get greater depth at the end of key stage one in reading, um, particularly increasing the number of vocabulary related questions at key stage two that they can answer. So we're focusing on reading. Then you can see down here that the leader has identified what are they going to do in terms of direct instruction to achieve that outcome? What are they going to do in terms of creating a language rich culture? Um, they've identified clear actions and they've identified clear monitoring activities that they're going to undertake. And that came from analysing the papers and finding out what children need to work on. So that's the end of module two. As we move on into module three, we're going to be looking much more specifically at what schools have done. We're going to hear from two teachers about the way they've developed vocabulary work in their schools.